The high poly sculpture can be done any number of ways. In general, since we are at a Blender conference, we like to sculpt in Blender. Um, it can be done in ZBrush, it can be done in Mudbox, or any other sculpting pipeline, it really doesn't matter. And all you really care about with the sculpting process is the form. You're looking for the major details, and in some cases, the minor details. Uh, oftentimes, depending on your production pipeline and what you're shooting for, uh, you may go so far as to sculpt in the individual pores on the face, you know, threads in the shirt. But oftentimes, you're actually not going to be doing that. Most of the times, in the high poly sculpt, you're actually only looking for the major forms, or what are generally referred to as low frequency details. Things like, like muscle groups, um, you know, skin shapes, bones, etc. You, you don't really care about the individual pores. Now, I've got them on this one just as an example. Um, but a lot of times, you really need to... The thing that, I guess, gets a lot of people in trouble with low-poly character work, particularly when you're involving normal mapping, is knowing how far to take things. The, one of the key things when you're doing game production is only do as much as you have to, which seems very contradictory to a lot of artists' pipelines and what artists like to do. We like to push things as far as we can and to touch every single little detail. You know, a large number of us are detail fanatics. You know, we want to go in and put all the little threads on the bottom side of the shoes. We want to do the insides of the shirts that no one's going to see. You can't do it. If you're developing your own game in your own time, do whatever you want. But assuming that you're doing a production environment, you have to leave out basically anything that you can. Um, in, in the production environment, uh, assuming that you're working at a or working at or for a typical game company, it's all about crunch time, unfortunately. Um, it, we wish that it wouldn't. We wish that we could all be like Valve and id and those kind of companies that just spend, you know, if they want to spend an extra couple of years on a project where the bridge was supposed to be done three years ago, eh, who cares? Because several million or you know, hundreds of million people will buy it. And so they do whatever they want. But for most of us, for rest of us, we have to restrict it any way that we can. So you've got to think about how can you save time any way you can. In this case, um, this was the, the face from the low poly series that I did. And I actually got a comment recently on, well, why didn't you do the entire face? Well, because the face doesn't show. All you see is the eyes and the bridge of the nose. I could have gone in and sculpted the entire face and been very happy with it and done all that, but that's two hours that I really don't need. You know, if if this character in the game were to have a removable helmet and to do multiple things, then you would need to. But in this case, you have to think about what is your character going to be doing in the game and how can you then cater that to your pipeline. With this, we made the decision that his helmet's not going to be removable. He's always locked inside his skull. And so we didn't sculpt the face. We also didn't sculpt the back of the head. In fact, if you look at the, the sculpture, unfortunately it's a little skull on my laptop. Character, and it's going to be great. 
oh, but I can't, I can't do that, I can't do that. So instead, you know, you just focus on what you get to do. And that's not to say that, you know, you can't produce a good, real, or polished character, because you absolutely can. But basically it means you just have to be smart about what you do do. And, let's see, going to the same kind of thing, let's move over to the UV unwrapping. So, after you have sculpted your model, you re apologize your model in whatever method works best for you, um, personally, um, must give a call out to B surfaces, it's awesome. Use it. It's 25 bucks, that's 25 bucks you'll ever spend. But, when you get to the UV unwrapping, there's a couple things you have to think about. First of all, where's the focus going to be? Most characters, this is pretty easy. It's going to be the face. And so, you have the majority of your texture space in the face. Most of us doing um, characters on our own time or for films are always told make make your maps as even as possible such that everything is the same as the texture. Wrong in the game environment. Sometimes in the film environment too. In the game environment, you have to focus on what's going to be seen. Are you going to see the bottom of his shoes as he's running? Most likely not. You might see it for half a frame. And so what we need to do is to adjust that as best we can to get the absolute best texture resolution where we want it. In most cases, this means se separating out the character into two different pieces. Generally, in most cases, it's the body and the head. Uh, or it can be more specific and say, okay, what are the parts of his body that, in order to make the surface come across well, need more detail? Skin, number one. Um, in a lot of games, one of the things you've got to try and do is make your character as reusable as possible. In this case, you know, if we're going to assume this character is a protagonist for the moment, and in case there's probably only one of him, in which case we probably only have to do one texture, you know, unless he's changing out his throughout, but that's a whole other topic. But if we assume for a second that this character is nothing but an extra in the game, you don't have time to do 600 different character models and character textures within the span of a game. You've got to realize that most production times on a lot of games out there, now we're not talking high budget games like One Warfare 3, uh, Halo and those, those are, you know, they've got the budget to spend more time on it. Most games, such as uh, most of the Tony Hawk games, most iOS games out there now, most of these are done in a six to eight month, month time period, which is obnoxiously quick. Uh, and so you have to, again, cut corners where you can. Which means, if we have this character, and he's an extra, one of the easiest things that we can do to make, say, 30 different variations, and thus 30 different extra characters that we can populate our game with, change out the textures. One of the first things that you'll notice when you pop up a game is, let's say you have a soldier model. If you take that same soldier model, populate it throughout the scene with no textures, you're going to immediately notice that it's the exact same model. But if you suddenly put a green camo on this guy, a red camo on that guy, and a blue camo on the middle guy, all of a sudden, just to the eye, you know, without looking closer, all of a sudden you think, oh, you've got three completely separate characters. Even though they're probably the exact same model, or at least really similar to the exact same model. Uh, and so, this brings up a whole other problem, though, is you need to be able to swap out your textures very quickly. You need hot swappable textures, essentially, which, if you imagine that you're going in and hand painting or modifying your textures to make them look really good, this poses a problem. Because if you want to be able to just not swap your textures and do, say, 30 different ones, you can't paint 30 different textures for a character that's going to be on screen for less than a minute. It's not practical. Uh, we wish we could. We'd love to. Some of us. Uh, but, you know, in a production environment, you can't. So, the way that you approach it is in your UVs, which I would imagine a lot of you would be groaning if you realized what this involves. Um, UV texturing, or UV unwrapping, as some of you may know, is notorious for being tedious, slow, and apologies for pain in the ass. Luckily, it's, it's a lot better in Blender than most tools, actually. Uh, Blender actually has quite good UV unwrapping tools. Not great. It has pretty poor seam tools, but great unwrapping tools. But